Okay, so I was watching uh, Bear Independence Report today, May the 8th, and I keep on seeing the same things come up, uh, and I wanted to at least reply to it, and that's regarding uh, COVID. So, there's lots of information that keeps on coming out about we don't really know what this is, we don't know how it acts, but over the months since following this issue since uh, January, um, and reading a lot on everything as things developed and I, I'm actually really surprised I guess the amount of time that I've put into it uh, some people that are researching it or otherwise maybe they haven't read the same articles and followed the uh, whole story from the beginning but the inflammatory response so uh, there's a nice uh, NCBI National Institute of Health article on their website uh, from May 13th 2011 uh, and it's article named the inflammatory response to cell death and this article for the abstract when you're reading it it talks about uh, necrosis and inflammation and the cytokine response and how what they say is that when the inflammatory response happens there's hyperemia and then plasma leak uh, or proteins and uh, leukocytes that are being affected as part of the defense process uh, leading to inflammatory response and repair and I wanted to say that I think that most people that understand illness and recovery and inflammatory responses will not be confused about what's happening with these inflammatory responses and the idea of uh, danger signals that uh, send uh, messages about the cellular death and uh, then recovery of the dead cells and removal with the immune system and uh, free radicals and trying to get all the all the the bad stuff out of the body and to promote healing and generation of new cells. This is this is not new information, and I got to say that I'm, I'm not a I'm not a medical doctor, and I. I'm not giving information as medical advice, but I'm bringing it as this general understanding that we should be well aware of what's actually happening at this point, uh, months later. Um, this is not new information. The cytokine response, when we're seeing people drop in the streets like flies in, in Wuhan uh, in January, uh, you know, all the information about the cytokine response and uh, basically cellular overload uh, as a response to the immune system responding to this, we already saw that months ago. Um, the way in which it affects people at different ages is because the immune system is not that everybody has the same immune system and it acts the same way, but young people and old people, they have different immune systems and different immune responses. So the way that a disease that attacks the immune system or is affected heavily by the immune system exhibits itself will differ. So when children they may not have as many antibodies and they may not have the same development so they're relying on a different part to the of the immune system as opposed to older people who if their immune system has been activated they have partial I wouldn't say partial immunities but partial activations that have overlaps among different types of illnesses and the body is able to respond to that but as people get even older uh, or they suffer from health conditions that weaken that immune system compromised immune systems they don't have the benefits of the young immune system and they don't have the benefits of the old, old and aged and uh, responsive immune system that's been already queued up and you know when people fail to keep their white blood cell counts and the whole leukocyte thing um, when they fail to keep that activated, like eating garlic regularly um, can help promote white blood cells. White blood cells are good. You want some white blood cells. Um, but when you don't exercise and you are of uh, high levels of uh, certain fats and you have buildup of chemicals in your body that interfere with the way the body would respond in a healthy situation, then you start being affected by... Uh, it, you might see something go beyond simple redness and heat, the feeling of heat sensation, uh, swelling and pain, 
Now, these are all symptoms that can be associated. Um, and what that is actually is, is that they're not symptoms. They're indications that your body's actually, its immune system is responding to uh, your body trying to fight off that illness and your cells dying. And um, basically that's like saying you're infected, but you're fighting it. Um, but when your body fails to get rid of it and the viral load continues to go up, the body keeps responding and bringing up heavier and heavier weapons and the rate and speed in which that occurs it is taxing on the body. The body's good at keeping homeostasis, usually if it's able to regulate itself, but it's not good at for dramatic shifts in, in the system because when you have dramatic shifts, the body has a threshold. It has a threshold of voltage. It has a threshold of nervous system response. And once that goes extreme, the body shuts itself off. And then when the body shuts itself off, the body goes into things like comas. You can have such dramatic responses that you have things like heart attacks and when you start having large accumulations of things going through the body you can suffer from strokes um, and clots and those 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 situations um, it's just too excessive if you have too much dead cellular material it builds up and um, basically that's when you start having serious uh, issues uh, pneumonia uh, brain blockages that lead to death and um, heart failure um, again I'm not saying this is a person with medical information but for general information only um, <laughs> the myocardial infractions and um, these are not new things these are they say that Although the host response to cell death is universally observed and rather dynamic, its underlying mechanisms are poorly understood. Um, I don't. I don't think that is the case. We already know how cells respond, and the the chemical levels, what chemicals are present, and the electrical charges that are present. Um, it's a large part to what's going on with all these signaling agents. Um, anyway, read, read, read that article, um, but program cell death necrosis, um, inflama inflammatory effects and the way that phagocytes and leukocytes all interact, um, it's, it's very indicative of what's going on with this. It's not this mysterious disease. Um, we know how the inflammatory response acts in the body. We know the role of cytokines um, and that it's a, a response. Um, the, in, the viral load aspect plays into that where uh, pro-inflammatory response is the same thing about NSAIDs and shutting down the inflammatory response. The inflammatory response is a way of fighting off the viral load. If the viral load gets to a point that it can't be shut down with inflammation, there's a buildup of, of dead cellular materials and that will cause the body to um, get all locked up and shut everything down and people will have organ failures or system failures in the organs which reduces the ability to get rid of all the stuff that that's those organs deal with. So, um, I don't want to go deep into this because I'm talking over my head already, but um, we know the essential mechanisms. We know the immune system is uh, multifaceted and there's multiple things that feed into that. So I just want to say that it, the response to this is that we don't know what's happening. Yeah, we, we know it's an inflammatory response. And we know that the inflammatory response is a response to the uh, viral loads and how the virus is being defended against by different types of uh, mechanisms within the immune system. It's not just one, one method. It's multiple systems in place. The immune system is not one thing. It's not one chemical that's in play. It's multiple cells that are part of that and it's you know that varies from individual to individual what their white blood cell count is phagocyte counts and uh, their mitochondrial responses their ability to create energy for cells or viral uh, growth the cellular death and where the viral loads are present and what conditions those viral loads are present to with uh, you know foreign materials and uh, body chemicals so there's 
the state of, of the body itself. They're all going to play into that. So, you know, months ago, we were talking about this being a mysterious disease. It's just a little flu. Um, yada, yada, yada. Um, what we know is that it, it's a viral phase that if there's enough cellular death leads to pulmonary um, disorders, uh, pneumonia, um, and it's, and then if the body can't fight the viral load and dead cell count, you can have a cytokine storm and that's basically your inflammatory system just overloading itself and it's like, yeah, we're gonna die if we don't fight this off. So it gives it, basically everything goes off and the, the immune system is basically failing at that point. Um, so the the takeaway is that all these other things like it's recently about this kawasaki disease and how it's showing in children not last i saw it was 15 people but this kawasaki disease is affecting children it's different it's not really different it's just the way that it exhibits itself so people exhibit fever when they're fighting off the illness so when children's immune systems are initially doing it it's having a fever response um it, it, they don't have they what they uh, children's immune system uh, differs from the adult immune system and fever and leukocytes. Um, again, this is pretty. This is so basic that I know what this is, and I'm not a medical expert. I haven't gone to medical school. So fever and the thermal regulation of the immunity of the immune system feels the heat. Um, again, for the National Institute of Health, for um, Sharon Evans, Elizabeth Rapatsky, and Daniel Fisher, and the year of that is 2015. So, fever is a cardinal response to infection that's been conserved in warm and cold-blooded vertebrates for over 600 million years of evolution. This is not unknown. People know this stuff. Uh, doctors should know this stuff and how the immune system is part of pathology. I'm pretty sure most doctors are going to have taken courses in pathology. Um, what we know is that when people get a fever, it's again part of that inflammatory uh, inf inflammation and, and heat are, are co-symbiont. Um, and you have the lymph lymphatic system that gets rid of all the junk and you have lymphocytes as part of that um, you have pain as a response redness and swelling it's much of the same stuff here and that doesn't matter for that um, yada yada you can stop watching at this point but okay so Heat shock proteins are cytoprotective proteins that are constitutively expressed and also rapidly induced under pre oh, proteotoxic stress conditions such as heat hypoxia, oxidative stress, toxin exposure, nutrient deprivation, and infection. It's classic there for what's happening with COVID. Um, heat shock between 42 and 45 degrees. This may t tie into the Kawasaki also, it's heat shock. They're inductible in febrile temperatures in mammalian cells, 38 degrees to 41 degrees. Stress-induced transcription of HSP is driven by post-translational modifications, sumolation and phosphorylation of heat shock factor protein HSF1, which releases it from a complex with HSP70 and HSP90. This results in the formation of HS1 homotremers that translocate to the nucleus and activate transcription of genes including HSP that contain heat shock element sequences. The major function of HSPs is to maintain appropriate folding of their client proteins, thereby protecting them from proteolysis. HSPs have 
key roles in regulating multiple signaling pathways under constitutive and stress conditions. For example, there are more than 200 established client proteins of HSP90, including members of MAPK, JAK, STAT, and KDK1 signaling pathways. Um, yada, yada, yada. Um, I don't want to just read the article. That said, the takeaway was that active areas of investigation are considering physiological impact of the multiple post-translation modification of HSPs and HSPs, for example, phosphorylation, acetylization, S-nitrosylation, ubiquination, oh, sorry, ubiquin, ubiquitination, and sumoylation, as well as interplay between the, these molecules and positive and negative immune regulation. So it goes in depth on the induction of fever, and this is not saying that fever will always occur, but there's a point in which fever can be maintained and it will cause the immune system to regulate along this method, um, which is the innate immune system and the neuronal circuitry within the central and peripheral nervous system. So the nervous system response and the immune system response interplay, uh, thermal regulation, um, we have certain types of receptors. So we have heat receptors and we have uh, pressure receptors. Um, there's different types of tactility. We don't necessarily only have the touch, the, the sense of touch, we have the sense of heat perception and we have the sense of pressure perception, uh, yada yada, within the nervous system. So it's, the lymphatic system is, is regulated largely by the nervous system and the effects of the lymphatic system on the nervous system uh, also, is also an interplay. So they're co-symbiont, like our, our body interrelates with itself. The, Pro the pulmonary circulatory system and so on and so forth, they're all interacting with the digestive system. No system is independent of all the other systems. They all inter interact. So one will regulate the other um, and that's why people are responding differently because they're different aspects of their body. It's not humors per se, but they're, they're physiological systems that are interplaying. and. It's not that this is a whole bunch of different diseases, it's a whole bunch of different bodies. So we need to understand that the body is what's affecting, is creating the differences. There are different versions of, of like different um, samples, what came to mind, but I want to say different uh, versions or different, um, there's, there's variations in, in each virus, much like there's variations in each human, not to the same extent. But um, this goes well beyond that because uh, I don't want to get too deep into it, but how the body responds or how the cytokine response happens, it's not only how our bodies respond to it, but how the organisms we host in our body respond to it, because they're also going to be infected. The bacteria in our body is going to be infected with the virus um, if it can receive it. Um, and the different cells, some cells in the body will interact with it, other cells will not. And cells that do may interact with cells that don't, but the absence or actions of those cells and th what the virus does to their responses will in effect alter the way the non-responsive cells also respond. So it's not just the virus's direct effects, but it's also the virus's indirect effects. However, um, we go back to acetylcholine um, so choline's, I'm um, pretty sure that you pr can produce these with um, ingestion of certain animal skins and a variety of other uh, breed foods probably, um, but it's, it's stored chemical and thermal energies and depending on diet it will also affect how the body responds. Um, the body's heavily regulated by calcium, uh, chlorine and uh, sodium and uh, potassium and 
it also is these more complex structures that depending on zinc also is a mineral um, depending on what substances you have in yourself the body will have limits to how the cells that in the presence of those chemicals or those uh, elements within minerals within um, certain cellular structures it's not just overarching but its specific locations will respond differently again it's not um, that people don't know this it's that it's complex and every individual is different so the the response and the reason for this is that when you try to say that you know people are are suffering different illnesses and we don't know what's going on i, I think that's in, incredibly um not in tune with the point of of medical information that is out there and that even lay people like myself um what we understand of of what's going on and i think that people really lack a basic understanding of medicine if they don't understand this um the response to viral infection um it's a viral infection um it's not a mystery disease it's a viral infection um so uh, Damage associated molecular patterns and pathogen associated molecular patterns, DMPs and PMPs, such as lipopolysaccharides, LPS, and toll like receptors, TLRs, and other recognition receptors, drives the activation of dendritic cells and macrophages. The innate immune cell re release pro <laughs> prostaglandin. E2, PGE2, as well as pyrogenetic cytokines, namely interleukin 1, yada 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 TNF, access to that, lose fever. So it's 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 very well known. It's 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 not new, it's not mysterious. It's just people don't understand even the basic um effort effort and no epinephrine responses and how you know histamine responses occur and you know how myocytes and nerve like little nervous system stimulations by chemicals in the body um, create the effects of illness um, the those effects aren't the problem the problem is when the body can't handle it and the cells start to die faster than they can be replaced and removed from the body um, and killing the the viruses and removing them from the body is much like removing the dead cells from the body um, that's the problem okay with that said I'm not saying this is what it is I'm just saying this is my impression of it I'm not giving medical advice I'm just giving my opinion on what's going on with this um, so I suggest reading that article in full that I that I had mentioned before. Um, so heat sensitive activities, release of neutrophils from the bone marrow. Again, uh, this is where the nervous system is driven from. Um, GCFS, GCSF, IL seventeen and IL one, and that's from the bone marrow and intestines and the neutrophil infiltration in the lungs. And again, that comes back as expressions of CXCL8 and endothelial barrier integrity. Um, so heat sensitive activities are increased neutrophil infiltration, neutrophil and elevated respiratory bursts and the pathogen, and that's the infection. So we need to look at heat sensitive activities uh, related to Kawasaki or other inflammatory responses and an elevated respiratory burst and neutrophil. Anyway, I, I think I've rambled on incessantly and all over the place. I'm sure anybody that understands this stuff, uh, at least partially, um, as what it actually is. So cytotoxic T, simple lymphocytes, um, and lys lysate from heat it, melanoma, in this case it's cancer from melanoma. Um, so again, this is a, a response. Anyway, I'm, yeah, so it goes on talking about the effect of 
fe fever enhancing, uh, the way the immune system is uh, responding by producing different uh, receptors or okay I'm done I'm, I'm very done with this I'm not uh, drawing antigen presenting cells um, yada 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 I've been up way too long Bottom end of the day, you want lymphocyte production. Eat your garlic, eat your raw garlic daily. Not to kill the bacteria, and as much as it is to stimulate the white blood cell production of lymphocytes. Okay, I need to end this. That's a pretty long article. It's actually pretty short, probably, for anybody that does medical type things, but end of the day is that it's not that we don't understand what's happening it's we do know what's happening and what we know is that we don't understand what's happening in different people who have different immune systems and not only different immune systems but different physiological systems like lymphatic systems and respiratory systems or pulmonary respiratory systems and digestive systems and epithelial systems or so on and so forth muscular systems they're all interreacting